we all know that Halo Infinite, in the state that it is in right now, is definitely missing some weapons and vehicles and map variations that were kind of more commonplace in previous Halo entries. And while we are sure to expect new weapons and vehicles to be added to Halo down the road as more content releases, it is really interesting if you take a closer look into the game files and see what things were at one point considered being included for the release of Halo Infinite, only to just not make the cut. Now for this video, we teamed up with GameCheat13 and specifically his other project, Alpha Archive, which focuses on preserving cut and deleted content. So at the end of this video, we'll have a link to Alpha Archive if you guys want to go over and check out more in-depth presentations of some of these weapons and vehicles actually working. And while you're at it, of course, you can subscribe to the channel. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and take a closer look at what didn't make it into Halo Infinite's final release. Now, before we jump into the weapons and vehicles, these are some of my most favorite things to take a close look at, which are the Halo Infinite multiplayer maps. Now, in general, we love spending time looking into the little details and intricacies in these multiplayer maps. But interestingly enough, a lot of the multiplayer maps in Halo Infinite have alternate pathways that are actually blocked off in the release versions of these maps that we currently play on in rotation. Now, whether or not this will be something that you can edit later on whenever Forge Mode finally does release. It could be really cool, but in the meantime, we can actually take a look into some areas that are inaccessible in the current builds of the map that are technically still there in the game. For instance, if you load up on Behemoth, you can see these types of larger hallways almost resembling a control room type hallway from a Halo ring that serve as these alternate routes into the middle area of the Behemoth map, almost like something that could be used in a multi-team type setup, a long forgotten game mode in the Halo universe, or maybe it would add some new routes that could play differently, or maybe it'll work really well in something like Infection. Now over here on launch site, there is this room that is inaccessible in the regular version of the map, and while there's not too much to it, it is really interesting just to notice that all of these cut areas are still incredibly detailed and fully textured, so who knows, maybe they will be utilized at some point in the future, and fingers crossed on that. Now over on Bazaar, by the tree or antenna room, there is this gate, and behind this gate is this little detailed hallway area with some steps and graffiti, which would allow for an alternate pathway from the center of the map, which is just blocked off by a closed door. And then similarly, on the other side of the map, there is a hallway also inside of the structure that we can't access right now. On streets, you may have noticed that this big truck blocking some sort of alleyway in the background, and when the game first came out, we spent a ton of time just trying to see what was on the other side of that by standing on it and looking through with snipers or whatever, but of course, with Alpha Archive and Game Cheat, we were able to now actually see what's on the other side, and it's really cool. It's this whole alleyway section that's completely blocked off. There's these garage doors, and you can kind of peek under them a little bit, and there's a ton of posters on the walls and whatnot, mostly just assets that you can see in the main level, but it is incredibly interesting to see how much detail is in this area that technically is completely outside of the map, especially these little vehicle things that I would love to one day get to drive, even though, you know, we can only hope. Seriously, I really want to be able to drive these vehicles. Over here, there's actually another little alleyway that you can run down, and this one has a little burger sign, which is kind of cool. And of course, there's that ODST We Remember graffiti on the side of the wall in this alleyway. And then on Aquarius, one of the most important discoveries is you can actually get into that little middle room, one of the mysteries we had with Halo Infinite from the very beginning, and you can get a closer look at that sandwich. So at least we have this now in our knowledge banks. Now, as we switch gears to weapons, it looks like at some point along the line, there was a prototype for a Brute Spiker somewhere along the way, which is a much requested weapon to make a return, just considering the fact that Brutes were so synonymous with the Spiker back in the Halo 3 days. And obviously, this is a very early build of it, and as pointed out on Alpha Archive, it has weaker melee damage and Halo 5 Magnum animations, so it likely was cut 
probably a little ways back. Though it is really interesting just seeing the weapon work to an extent in action. Now, another weapon that has been kind of controversial is definitely the Bulldog Shotgun in Halo Infinite, since we don't have a pump shotgun, it's just this semi-auto shotgun. But it does look like left over in the game files, you can see this Halo 5 shotgun that is more in line with the pump shotgun. It also appears that there's a leftover fuel rod cannon from Halo 5 Guardians as well. However, this time around, it runs on battery and actually overheats. So maybe at some point there was consideration in changing up the way that the fuel rod cannon would work in Halo Infinite, though it ended up not making it into the release version of the game. There's also a prototype of the Halo 5 saw, which still uses its Halo 5 model and animations, though just watching a little bit of gameplay in Halo Infinite, even if it's against bots, this gun almost feels like something that could play really well in the current sandbox, even if it's just restricted to certain game modes. Okay, so this next one's really interesting because it is the incineration cannon. However, based off of the description from Alpha Archive, it looks like the original weapon file isn't present, but the sentinel weapon was built from the incineration cannon, which apparently isn't too uncommon, though it is rare that they don't clean up the file later, removing the weapon that it was first based off of. So, because of that, we're now able to see the incineration cannon through a little bit of modding, where mostly we can just see some of the first person animations, and it's kind of neat. Another leftover from Halo 5 being this Berserker's Claw Hunter Arm gun, which you can carry around like a turret. It's really impressive and something I wish you could actually get in the campaign after you defeat a hunter. It just feels like it would have been really fitting to get to use this, and even if it was just for a limited amount of time. But yeah, it definitely looks really cool. Maybe one day we'll see this in Infinite. Also, the golf club from Halo 5's files are also present in Halo Infinite, so it's kind of cool to see this in action. Also, on launch site, you actually can find a ton of leftover files referencing Halo 5 Guardians, and on Alpha Archive, they were able to show a ton of Halo 5 Spartans with different armor variations and load them in on the map. Now, this could just be leftover from Halo 5 Guardians, or maybe in the future we'll see a Spartan core more in line with the style of the Halo 4 and 5 Spartans, which do look a little bit different. Okay, now interestingly enough, on the vehicle side of things, firstly, we have a vehicle known as a Skiff, which is really interesting because it looks kind of like a giant Prowler. And matter of fact, in the campaign, you can see parts of this wrecked, but you never see a full one put together. But yeah, when you load this into a game of multiplayer and you realize how giant this thing is, it's pretty amazing actually with just how fast it is considering how absolutely massive the thing also is. Okay, then there's this really odd looking mongoose that has treaded tires and it almost looks like the wheels are these triangles, which obviously isn't the case here. Now, when loading it into the game, it drives around just like a normal mongoose except it's kind of floating slightly above the surface. So our best guess is maybe the treaded mongoose would have been used in snowy terrain had there been any in the campaign, and that could have been really cool to see. So maybe one day we'll get a story DLC and we can finally get to see the snow goose in its glorious action or something like that. But yeah, it's still cool to see this despite how odd or jarring the tires may look at first glance, not knowing what the thing is and not having the full context as to what it could have been, but still, one day, we may get to see it, hopefully, because this is definitely one of my favorite things I've seen. I can just imagine it now, a level like Halo 3's Warthog Run, except you're in a snow goose, and you're driving away from an avalanche like Modern Warfare 2 when you're in the snowmobile. It's such a perfect idea. I really, really want to see more of this in the future. Also, as it may appear from the game files, there could have been an alternate boss fight to Eshram that eventually ended up getting cut or passed on in favor of the boss fight we actually have in Halo Infinite, but there is a special Wraith variant called Eshram's Wraith that has an incredibly powerful cannon, which really makes me hope they bring this variant back just so at some point we get to face off against it. There's also this unfinished Stinger Wasp that shoots different types of projectiles, like an automatic shotgun and some 
other type of missile as well, I can kind of see this one being maybe a little bit too overpowered. Now, some of you may remember in Halo 5 Guardians, they had this Needler Warthog variant, and in Halo Infinite, this may have been something intended at some point, as it does have a different model, though it ended up getting cut somewhere along the way in development. Interestingly enough, when you actually get it working, it only works on this specific map, otherwise it just hard crashes the game, so probably wasn't intended much later than maybe some early prototyping. Now some of you may remember all the way back during the Halo Wars era, there was supposed to be a vehicle known as the Cougar that would have served as an UNSC APC type vehicle, though it ended up never coming into fruition, and it looks like with Halo Infinite at some point it may have been heavily considered, as we do have this from the game files that we can see and use to some extent. Now likely it was cut because they couldn't find a good way to implement this in multiplayer without it being completely overly powered, but as Halo Infinite's sandbox continues to grow and expand, I can see ways that they could end up putting this in in a balanced way for certain game types like big team battle heavies or something like that where both teams have some sort of counter against a vehicle like this. Still, it's really cool to see even if it's not even textured or anything like that, just to kind of get an idea of what this could have been like. Then it looks like besides just Eshram's Wraith, there was another vehicle variant that ended up getting cut called Antigonum's Ghost. I don't know who Antigonum was, maybe he was a cut boss fight or something, but nonetheless, his ghost does look pretty powerful nonetheless. Also, interestingly enough, while we don't have a Gauss Hog in Halo Infinite yet, there is one found in the files, and this one is in fact different from Halo 5's Guardians version, so it's not just left over, though the way that it looks makes it seem like it is possibly an asset that was cut quite a while back. The redesign doesn't look half bad though, it does kind of resemble more of a Gauss cannon while also looking a lot like the older versions of the Gauss gun, so where and how this ends up playing into the future of Halo Infinite, it could be really cool to see what ends up happening with this. And then as many of you have probably already noticed or seen on YouTube, we also know that there is an entire cutscene that ended up getting cut from the game that is available that would have played during or after the credits in Halo Infinite. Why it ended up getting cut, we don't know, but essentially it's a brief cutscene where the pilot wakes up, Master Chief is with him, and they hear a distress call or some sort of nearby UNSC signal with a friendly designation, and there's some Morse code in the background that people have been trying to figure out what it means. There's a ton of speculation as what it could be. I don't know why it wasn't in the main game or why they left it in the files but didn't put it in the main game, but still, there's a ton of theories as to what was going on with this cutscene. Technically, it's not canon. Like, this cutscene could also just be completely retconned, and that's an option that they still have. So, it's just another one of those situations where we'll have to wait and find out what happens. Now, a huge thank you to GameCheat13 and Alpha Archive for helping with this video. GameCheat13 has always been a longtime supporter of this channel, so it was really cool to get to work with him for this project. And if you guys could go and show some support to his project, Alpha Archive by subscribing to it. The channel's really close to passing 5,000 subscribers, so let's try to push that over as a general thank you to a project dedicated to getting a glimpse to some of this cut content in action. Also, if you want to see more content like this, we also did a video on cut content from previous Halo games. You can check that video out as well. And if you're not subscribed to Rocket's Law, then maybe subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss any of our future uploads as well. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. With a brand new video.